Hi, I'm Jared, and my colleague Brett and I are going to teach you how to import a map into Rainbird's Cirrus software, and then how to set up your irrigation system within this map. Before we begin setting up the map, it's important to understand why you would want a map implemented in your irrigation software. Many golf courses do not use the map feature of their software, as the map is an optional feature. Why would you want to use the map in your software? One of the main benefits of using the map is that it helps you to visualize exactly where you're watering. For example, if you're adjusting your irrigation settings at the end of the day, you might know that you need more water on the middle left of the first fairway. If you don't have a map, you'll know that you need to adjust ahead somewhere between station 3 and 7. With the map, you can easily visualize that the dry spot is located next to station 5. To put it simply, the map gives you a tool to help you visualize and adjust individual sprinklers when using your irrigation software. You can still irrigate effectively without the map, but having a map will save you time in programming your system and help you irrigate more accurately and with greater confidence. Now I'm going to show you a map that we made for the first hole and run through what you can do with this map. Once I've shown you what you can do, Brett will show you how you can add all of these functions into a map of your own. First, we're going to open the map by clicking on the map icon in the upper left. As you can see, our map has many labels on it. We've labeled the hole, each area of the hole, such as the tees, the rough, the fairway, the greens, the approaches, and the perimeter, and all of the sprinkler stations and their attached rotors. It may look like a mess now, but by the end of this video, you'll be able to understand a map like this at a glance. First, we're going to turn on a sprinkler. We're going to stick to the tees since the tee area has the least going on. As you first, we click on the F button that represents the fairway area. This will bring up a menu for all of the fairway sprinklers. From here, I can control each station individually. If you hit the select all button, you can control every fairway station at the same time. Let's set the whole fairway to run for two minutes. Once you hit the check button, the sprinklers will start to go. Notice how all of the fairway rotors are now highlighted in red. A quick glance up to the top of the screen shows us that our pump is pumping out 732 gallons of water per minute with all of these sprinklers run. Let's head back over to the T. As you can see, the sprinklers on the T have stopped running. Let's see what's going on. In the monitor log menu, you can see that the sprinkler has shut itself off because it has completed its two minutes of irrigation. It has no time to go remaining, and it says that the sprinkler has run for a total of four minutes because we ran it for two minutes before this video started. There are several other kinds of information you can get from this station map. Let's right click on a sprinkler. When you right click on a sprinkler, many options pop up such as device data, run time, rotor data, flow manager data, precipitation data, and the station symbols. These options bring you to tables where you can view and adjust properties of this individual station. Such as in the rotor data menu, uh, you can adjust the gallons per minute for the flow of your sprinkler in gallons per minute, the rotor type, nozzle type, pressure, and number of rotors. You can also access this information from the data section of the Cirrus software, but the map makes it easy to target the station you need. The last feature that I'm going to talk about is the edit label feature. This feature makes it easy to add more notes to your irrigation map without affecting any other part of your programming. I'm going to add a note to this sprinkler to let my irrigation technician know that it leaks. She should see this later today when she adjusts our program for the night and make a plan to repair the sprinkler. To edit a label, you right click on the station and select edit label. Now you can type whatever you want and replace, and it will replace the name of this the station. Now that I've shown you what you can do with a map in your irrigation software, Brett will show you how to implement areas, stations, and rotors into a map of your own. Starting from the home screen of the Rainbird Cirrus software, the first thing we want to do is import a map. So in order to do this, you must first have a map saved as a file on your hard drive so provided that a digital map of your golf course has been created, we can import that map onto our Cirrus software. To do this, click on the compass at the top left of the screen, 
and go down and select Map Import. This looks like the three golf holes. Then at the top of the screen, you will select Import Map. Your screen will be blank as I already have a map on mine. And then you just overwrite it, yes. And you go into your file and select that digital map and open. And there's your nice looking digital map. So next, we're going to build the data. And before building the data onto the map, ensure that you have already compiled an irrigation database. Again, click the compass at the top left and select the course data builder. Once you're in the data builder, the first step is to mark out all the holes. Using the zoom in button, click and drag the box over the area you would like to mark. So for our purposes, we're going to do hole six. And it zooms in on hole six. So click the letter H at the top of the screen and click the area near the hole and a box will pop up where you input your course and hole number. The software will house up to three 18 hole golf courses, but since we only have one upload, it will remain course one. And this is where you input your hole number. So six, okay. You will then see an H marked course one and hole six. And instead of zooming out, you can pan the map using the little hand at the top left of the screen. So to move on to the next hole, just click that hand and you can pan rather than having to zoom out. This will allow you to go to whatever hole you want to go to very easily. So after you mark all of your holes, we can mark all the separate green space areas on each hole. This is made simple by clicking the little flag at the top and typing in whatever hole you want to go to. So I just moved it away from six and because six is our only hole right now, we will just go hole six and press okay. And there it takes you back to hole six. In this database, I have greens, tees, fairways, approaches, rough, surrounds, and perimeters. At the top, just click whichever listed area and apply it to the corresponding place on the golf course by clicking the H, greens, add it to your greens, tees, you can add it to your tees, and so on and so forth. Approaches, rough, surrounds, perimeter. You can move these areas anytime by clicking the move button with the four arrows at the top of the screen. So if I want my greens a little further away from the green or up top, just move it, click on the big letter, rough, move it a little closer, just like that. It's easy. When you've set up the layout of your course, you can continue to inputting your irrigation stations. You want, you want to add existing stations as this uses information from the database that you've built and puts it onto your map. So at the top right, click existing, and then add existing stations. Uh, this will pop up saying that's what you need to do to add your system. Uh, you can say don't show this in the future so it doesn't pop up every time you want to add a station. 
So once you click your add existing station, click the large letter of the green space you want to apply it to. So we'll apply it to T's. It is important that you select sprinkler stations based on the order they are laid out within the database. For example, from T to fairway, odds on the left, evens on the right. Remember, most stations are paired, so ensure that you are selecting every second head on the paired stations. So we will first go to T's and work toward the fairway. So add existing stations to your T and every second head. Now to do our rough, we will go from T to green. So our first rough is back here, next by the bunker. And then there is also one right here. The fairway will also start T to green with odds being on the left. So click your fairway. Uh, odds on the left, alternating, evens on the right. Every other sprinkler head. Then our last, or our second last two are both going to be individual. So we will click those just for this purpose. And we can move on to approaches because approaches goes across the fairway. They're always the last two on the fairway. So you select your approach as one station. If you mess up like I just did, there's a delete button up here where you can delete this fairway station and correct it by clicking on add existing station again, click on your approach and click your approach sprinkler head. Uh, on the greens, you will use the bottom left sprinkler to start and work your way clockwise. So we will zoom in just on the green so it's easier to see the sprinkler heads. And then you just click on add existing to your green. And the first one starting, you go in a clockwise direction. When you get to your green, problems may occur when you're doing your perimeter. As these are very close to the green's heads, as you can see, they're right beside each other. So to fix all this, you just need to place your perimeter heads a little fur further away from the greens. And go back to your perimeter. So just make sure they're kind of in order with the greens heads. So perimeter one that we did here, we can move it and go right over top of there and do the same thing with the other ones. That was greens, which I didn't want to move. I want to move the perimeter to here. This perimeter can go here. Now we are ready to add rotors to heads that are attached to a station. When doing this, make sure you check your system database to ensure rotors are connected to the correct corresponding stations. To do this, click the Add Rotors button that is next to your existing stations button. Then click the station you want to pair it with and click the head you want to pair that station with and repeat. So for T's we're doing, just click that station, the head, station, head, station head, station, head. And you can repeat this with all your paired heads throughout the entire course. In conclusion, we have gone through all the benefits of the software and how using the irrigation software will benefit you by allowing you to visualize your active irrigation system, control individual heads, and irrigate more efficiently. 
We also went through how to import a map and build data onto that map. This included marking holes, marking areas such as greens, tees, fairways, etc., adding stations, and rotors. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it helped you install. Oh, typo. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it helped you install an irrigation map successfully onto your Cirrus software.